yes yes sir yes, yes visible okay. please do so. okay okay sir so the topic is understanding the basti therapy and its mode of action so whenever we talk about the basti therapy the primary questions like these there is a type of the patient we should give the basti what should be the gut condition while administering the basti can we directly start the basti without doing any vamana virechana like shodhana procedure and what will be the optimum quantity of the basti basti can be given in the night or not uh, why to give anuvasana after food and so many so many questions are there in the mind of the students as well as in the, um, our minds also so these are the common queries that are generally raised while uh, we are thinking about the basti therapy or practically implementing in in case of patients so uh, this is one of the important question is basti a rasayana therapy because see in uh, uh, means in charak samhita rasayana pad is mentioned but nowhere it is written that basti therapy is a rasayana therapy in rasayan path especially but when we see that basti is a vatar chikitsa why it should not be included as a rasayana because vata is responsible for aging na so if vata is responsible for aging basti has to be rasayan so when we see the phalashruti of basti in that it is clearly mentioned bastir vayah sthapayita mean asthapan asthapan is the word used for basti that means asthapan is ayushah sthapanam that means basti is anti anti aging though in rasayana pad it is not a bheshaj so it is not mentioned there but still when acharya says about uh, prerequisite to start the rasayana therapy he clearly mentions that manah sharira shuddhanam siddhanti prayatatmanam means before starting the basti uh, any rasayana therapy uh, the man and sharir should be pure means it should be uh, uh, done after shodhana so shodhana can be anything na vamana virechana or basti ha huh? niroha basti is generally considered as shodhana and anuvasana as a shamana but being uh, mala shodhana anuvasana can be considered in a shodhana so in that way uh, the basti is a rasayana and it is a prerequisite very much important in case of uh, rasayana to achieve the proper uh, properties of the rasayana in practically also we see suppose if we are treating any patient of uh, any chronic ailment and we are going to start some vardhman pipli type of the rasayan we need to do virechana or we need to go for basti therapy and then we start for the rasayana and those therapy give more clinical effects uh, rather than directly starting in ama condition so it is better to go with uh, uh, shodhana first and that shodhana is nothing but basti and vamana virechana so in that way we can consider basti as a rasayana so uh, one second na Ah, yes. Yes. So, why basti is intended to work in the pakvashaya mainly and not in the small intestine? Ah, uh, this question, whenever a student of BMS generally comes and he asks, why we are treating it the colon? Why we are treating the colon? And if disease is somewhere else. and uh, somewhere in joints or somewhere in the brain then what is the need to go uh, and approach the colon for it so the question lies in the uh, avastha pak that what is uh, explained in acharya uh, charak sanhita that uh, tatu bhava tatu bhava responsible for vayu that is whenever the bolus of uh, meal that we are taking it comes to the pakvashay it gets shoshaman means it get dried and whatever the pakvata is there pakva part is there it is having katu bhava and because of which vayu is produced so the production of vayu is basically in the pakvashaya and that is the main reason why acharya has selected uh, the pakvashaya as a uh, method where we should act the basic idea behind uh, means incorporating or designing the basti therapy is to clean the pakvasha that is the basic idea and many other associated factors are there but the main idea is to clean the pakvasha not for the enema not for the bowel cleansing and not for just the merely for removal of the feces 
Ayurveda thinks beyond the feces, there are some other factors which are responsible for the diseases. And we consider they, we cannot uh, uh, point out them. That's why Acharya has given a generalized term that is Katu Bhava. It includes so many things that we cannot uh, uh, exactly pinpointly tell. So that's why the general term that is Katu Bhava is explained here. So the Katu Bhava is basically the factors responsible for production of the Vayu or production of the degenerative type of the disorders or the disorders where Vata is so in those conditions, we have to just cleanse the uh, large intestine and this katubhava get removed, the bowel motility is improved and because of this, these uh, factors, uh, they cannot stay there and there is a mruduta for colon and this mruduta is required for uh, proper removal of the vata. So in that way, uh, the pakvashaya is basically selected. Now coming to the next part, that is what is then the prerequisite of gut? Uh, to administer a basti therapy. I am giving one example. Suppose a patient of rheumatoid arthritis is coming to me. Okay. And she is having the lot of sama symptoms. Like she is having a gaurav in body. All over the body. And she is having a, even admana like symptoms. Which are the symptoms of uh, samta in pakvashe. So those symptoms are there. She is having lot of morning stiffness. So in that case. I have multiple choice of options. Na? I can go for langhan, basically, which is actually indicated langhan, deepan, pachan, and then I can go for certain type of the shodhana therapy. But suppose patient is having lot of pain and he requires immediate relief. Okay. And I'm planning for some type of the basti, which I suppose that it can be useful in such type of the patient. Then can I directly administer that is the question. Because uh, classically it is not correct. Because in classically we should go for uh, pachana and then only uh, after langana and pachana then only we can go for the administration of any type of the shodhana therapy. Uh, that is correct. No problem. But uh, considering the condition of the patient, it is not advisable for him that you go and take some analgesics or some any type of the other medicines to relieve your pain and uh, simultaneously go on doing langan and dipan pachana and then you come to me. That is not advisable. So in that cases, uh, what we can do is we can go for just uh, minimal prerequisites that are needed to administer the basti therapy. So the minimal prerequisite is the sroto mukha shuddhi means your gut where the basti is to be uh, administered that is the part of colon it should be clean that is sroto mukha shuddhi and it has to be niram now how to achieve the niramta in colon that is a very tricky thing see in uh, grahani chikitsa adhyay when charakra is explaining about the arm uh, he has explained three three stages of arm one is arm in uh, uh, amashaya that is the earlier stage where he uh, advises for ullekhana type of the treatment means do vamana, instant vamana and that ama can get removed. If ama is there in the pakvashaya, then, then such admana and such symptoms are produced. And in that case, uh, you can go for uh, deepan yukta rechan. What he advises is deepan yukta rechan. So ideal uh, do, uh, kalpa may be errand tail you can give along with uh, some shunti like uh, preparation and uh, achieve some of the vegas that can be called not as a virechana but it is the anulomana. So that can be done and if samata is all over the body means gaurav, excessive sleep, these symptoms are there that means samata is all over the body. In such cases it is better to go for langhana instead of doing any other therapy. So if my patient is having such symptoms where I uh, I am intended to do basti, okay, and um, uh, I have to do the basti in any case. So in such cases, what I can do is I can give kosta shuddhi. I can give kosta shuddhi for minimum two days and that itself relieves some of the symptoms because kosta shuddhi itself does the vatanulomana. In um, Vatvedi Chikitsa Adhaya also Acharya Charaka has given first treatment as virechan. And then he explains that if virechana is not possible, patient is not suitable for virechana, then you go for basti. So virechana is one of the treatment indicated. So uh, not the classical snehapana, then virechana, it cannot be done because the, considering the condition of the patient, samta is very much if you start the snehapana, the symptoms are going to get aggravated. So uh, koshti shuddhi can be done for one, two days or maximum three days. 
and then you can start the basti therapy i have seen in many patients that this regimen gives good result in rheumatoid arthritis patients because uh, when patient comes to us uh, very debilitated and uh, he cannot move uh, he is on wheelchair and uh, he tells that you do something and relieve my pain and stiffness first so in such cases we go for such type of the therapy ha huh, but basti that we are using in such cases it should not be the brumman type it should be purely shodhan type basti the even the oil that we are going to use in basti it should be the shodhan like castor oil or any other type of the uh, shodhan taila okay so in that way uh, if we are achieving the uh, gut uh, properly then we can start the basti so see in panchakarma the basic concept is to bring the dosha from shakha to koshta that is the definition of panchakarma and that is why rakta moksha is not included under the head of panchakarma because there doshas are removed from shakha directly so to bring the dosha from shakha to koshta and then to remove them it is necessary to do the vruddhi vishandan pak srotomukha vishodhan these are the prerequisites so srotomukha vishodhan and this pak of whatever the ama is there in the small, uh, large intestine that is the prerequisite to start the basti therapy then you can go for the basti therapy uh, if your drug is proper so um, if there is a avrodha in um, this uh, gut then your basti therapy is not going to give the proper result and after doing basti some time i have seen the symptoms increases if we are not doing the proper koshta shuddhi so koshta shuddhi is the basic prerequisite so now uh, that's what uh, is explained here can we directly start the basti therapy um, in some cases also this is the this is not about prerequisite you can see that acharya charaka has given the uh, clear indication that durbalo yo avirechcha hasyad tam niruhai hi upachare means in vatvadi chikitsa only he has written that durbal and avirechcha patient you can go for niruha and uh, in such patients where snehan snehan is a prerequisite for vaman and virachan so if in patients are not suitable for snehana where there is uh, utsanna kapha and medas then we can go for uh, basti therapy directly just by cleansing the gut even uh, sometime there is a uh, means patient is very aged or patient is a, a child in such cases we cannot do the shodhan therapy like virachan and vaman so though it is a very good therapies for dosha haran but considering the katu tikshna ushnata of the drugs that are used it is better to go for asthapan because it gives uh, nutrition to the body and simultaneously is removes the dosha so this is the ideal condition that we have to always look for or achieve while doing the basti therapy and not merely directly go for jump for the basti therapy so uh, i will give one example this is one patient hope all are, all can see uh, one basti kalpa uh, i have explained here so i was talking about some shodhana type of the basti basti is basically nothing but a yukti that can be applied to achieve our uh, uh, clinical goal so suppose patient is not suitable for snehana then patient is also not suitable for sneha in basti right because in niruha basti also we use sneha basti has the final effect which is clad it increases clad in the body and that is why acharya have clearly mentioned in certain cases like udarich pramehich kushtisthula ch manavaha in those cases though he has told that asthapan can be done and anuvasan cannot be done but still if asthapan is having such a, a snigdha property then it can also be harmful so in such cases you have to be very cautious and you have to select the basti kalpa which is ruksha basti kalpa that is in ruksha in nature so i will give one example we are uh, presenting one case that is uh, um, patient of uh, nephrotic syndrome basically he was diagnosed with nephrotic syndrome autoimmune type of the disorder um, so uh, this is the electron microscopy report of the patient almost uh, 9 out of 24 glomeruli were sclerosed and uh, patient was having a uh, whole body edema and um, a little bit of uh, ascites and uh, heavy proteinuria the proteinuria was the main symptom so i categorized this patient under vasameha shotha 
ओके सो दीज आर माई डायग्नोसिस दैट इज शोथ एंड वसा मेहन एंड इवन श्वास श्वास सिम्टम्स वेर ऑल्सो देयर बिकॉज पेशेंट वॉज हैविंग अ माइल्ड प्लूरल इफ्यूजन सो इन सच केसेस इट वॉज डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू गो फॉर एनी टाइप ऑफ द शोधन एक्चुअली द शमना वॉज द आइडियल कंडीशन इन दीज केसेस बट कंसिडरिंग द कंडीशन ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड वॉट वी थॉट अबाउट द बस्ती इज अ बेस्ट ड्रग फॉर मर्म परिपालन सो वी डिसाइडेड टू गो फॉर सम बस्ती प्रिपरेशन सो द बस्ती वॉज नॉट क्लासिकल एक्चुअली वॉट वी डिड इज वी यूज हनी हनी इज बेसिकली कफ शामक ड्रग सो यू कैन यूज इट सॉल्ट हियर इन पेशेंट आई विल फर्स्ट शो द रिपोर्ट्स यू कैन सी दैट पोटेशियम इज स्लाइटली इंक्रीज सो वेन पोटेशियम इज हाई इट इज नॉट एडवाइजेबल टू गिव सैंधवा इन बस्ती बिकॉज सी लवन इज नीडेड इन द बस्ती इट मे बी सैंधव इट मे नॉट बी सैंधव ओके सैंधव इज रिच इन पोटेशियम सो वी एवॉइडेड सैंधवा इन इन दिस केस वी नॉर्मली वी यूज कॉमन सॉल्ट ओके इवन शोथ वॉज देअर and the drug that is indicated for shoth is punarnava and gokshur but gokshur is also rich in potassium so i avoided uh, gokshur also in this case we go for we went for only punarnava punarnava kalka was used shatpushpa that is commonly used in the basti and pipli pipli because this is the uh, kidney disorder and i have seen many papers where vardhman pipli rasayan is used in such cases so i decided to go for pipli and uh, the kashay that was easily available was punarnavashtakvat punarnavashtakvat is readily available so we used that and in prakshepa actually we we wanted shilajit and uh, shilajit is also a good drug uh, for kidney disorders and uh, chandraprabhavati i thought that would be the very good drug in such cases because chandraprabhavati contains guglu which is anti inflammatory um, shilajit which is having a very good effect on kidney disorders and uh, such type of the dhatu shaithilya basically the role of sh shilajit is to clean the uh, is to correct the dhatu shaithilya that is present so because of that chandraprabhavati is ideal formulation that can be given orally also so we gave that as a prakshepa uh, did uh, the powder of chandraprabhavati and administered as a prakshepa so in that way when we give the basti therapy so this was the result you can see the bt and uh, after treatment uh, uh, results so blood urea came down from 44 to 17 and rest uh, as you can see here the main the thing that we were looking for was urine protein so you can see this uh, protein creatinine ratio so it was initially urine protein was 280 mg per dl and upcr was uh, 3.98 which was very difficult and because of that the patient was not having any relief in his edema as his triglycerides were very high patient's uh, uh, ms liver was having under uh, it, it was under a lot of pressure and uh, pleural effusion was not getting cured so after doing this therapy the mainly this urine protein creatinine ratio come to 0.55 which is normal which is almost normal and clinically if it is below 1 as per the advice of a nephrologist which i uh, came in contact he told me that if it is below 1 it is okay okay so in that way um, this condition get under control and uh, this uh, symptoms uh, get relieved so uh, here we understood that basti is acharya have told that तस्मा न बस्ति समम किंचित कर्म मर्म परिपालन अस्त सो इन त्रिमर्मी अध्याय ऑल्सो आचार्य चरक गिवन इम्पॉर्टन्स ऑफ बस्ति सो बस्तीन बुद्ध्या विचार्य महामर्म परिपालना प्रयोजय सो वेर एवर देर इज अ मर्म डिसऑर्डर लाइक आई हेव सीन प्रैक्टिशनर्स यूजिंग बस्ति थेरपी फॉर कार्डिय डिसऑर्डर्स प्रैक्टिशनर्स यूजिंग बस्ति थेरपी फॉर दिस टाइप ऑफ द किडनी डिसऑर्डर्स द मेन मोटो ऑफ presenting the case here is uh, basti therapy that is used here is not a classical basti na we have not used any type of the uh, sneha in the basti so this is the change that you can do in the basti therapy this liberty acharya have given to you because if we use sneha in such cases sneha will increase the shoth so considering the shoth in pathology we can go for uh, basti without any type of the sneha so it is basically doing the rukshana here so another um this is one of the uh, karma marma paliparanam asti i am going to prove that point so you can see the 
this is a lever of the rat okay so it was in my pg thesis what we did uh, what we did is lekhan basti was the kalpa and uh, we gave lekhan basti for 21 days one anuvasan three niruha in that schedule uh, anuvasan was for madan fal tel and uh, after doing this therapy for 21 days simultaneously while doing the therapy we gave pure cholesterol to the patient uh, these rats okay so extra pure cholesterol along with coconut oil was administered to the uh, rats and you can clearly see without microscopic images that uh, what is the condition of uh, rat that is not uh, treated with the basti therapy you can see the yellowish uh, fatty degeneration of the liver rat also it is uh, increased in the size and you can clearly see the normal liver so this is the effect that you can see um, if basti is given so that much uh, effect on these vital organs like heart kidney liver and brain the basti is having so i am very much fascinated with these results and uh, since then we are using this basti therapy commonly in such type of the uh, marma vadis okay so it is not just uh, the oral therapy you should do you can do uh, along with the oral therapy this uh, basti therapy can be done so these are uh, microscopic images which clearly proves that in cholesterol control cases there is a cell infiltration in treated uh, rats there is no such type of the injury to the liver was seen so uh, there is one more important query regarding basti therapy and its clinical application is can we give basti to the comatose patient? So I have seen many practitioners giving basti in comatose patients. I don't know what is the purpose. So we searched in our classics. So in classics, it is written that matta murchita yoho. Means in murchita patient, you should not give basti. Okay. Basti is contraindicated. Asthapan basti is contraindicated in such patients. And it, exactly in these patients, the practitioners are giving the basti. So what is the logic behind it? Now see, in such patients, what Acharya told that, Matta murchita yoho, bhrusham vichalitayam saudnyayam, chittopaghatat vyapatsyat. So, chittopaghat will be there, means there will be shock on your psychology. So, that is exactly the thing which is actually a vapor is used by the practitioners to create the mental shock in such cases. Because you know, in coma patient, to get him out of the coma, the mental shock or certain uh, type of the mental trauma somewhere helps in some, some cases. Okay. So in it is a... Uh, means it is a chance that by patient can get cured it is not always that there is some pathology like vata get removed and uh, uh, mana was rotas will get cured so it is not like that actually basti is given in comatose patient just to create the shock so i have seen some practitioners uh, i have heard some lectures also and they tell that they give 10 bastis they give uh, means uh, many bastis repeatedly till the patient comes out of the coma so this is nothing but creating the mental shock because there is a relation between the gut and brain through the gut brain axis that is the uh, uh, enteric nervous system which is acting if you are uh, because when uh, the uh, our means uh, in garbha kal whenever there is brain development there is a relation between gut and your brain Okay, both are uh, derived from the same type of the tissues and because of that, uh, there are many receptors which are similar uh, present in the brain also and present in the gut also. It is seen that whatever the receptors are there for the pituitary uh, in the brain, similar type of the receptors are there in the gut also. So if you stimulate them, the brain gets stimulated. So the same logic is applied here and through that mental shock, only this uh, basti is acting. It is not for the vata shaman or vata shodhan. Now, can we use basti as a shaman chikitsa? It is also an important question because see, um, there is a fine line between shaman and shodhan. And uh, sometimes basti acts as a very good shodhan chikitsa. Sometimes it gives shaman effect also. So where, how it is acting, that depends upon the dose and the method that you are using. So I have come across one clinical application of basti where Gomutra Arka was administered in the dose of only 20 ml. 20 ml is nothing but uh, concentrated Gomutra Arka. It was not diluted. 
the directly they bought the uh, gomutra arka from market and with 20 cc syringe with the um, catheter they are in uh, giving basti to the patient on every alternate day in case of shvitra shvitra is basically the kapha dominant vadhi where there is a marga avrod in the srotasa so giving gomutra arka through the basti arka is basically a liquid preparation okay so that water extract of gomutra it can readily get absorbed from the rectum as well as colon okay so here uh, the dose is 20 ml so probably it may not go to colon it may go because of a tikshnata or if it is not going still through the rectum it can be well absorbed so in such a form uh, it will directly go to the um, blood circulation and it will uh, work as a shamana chikitsa and not at all as a shodhana chikitsa okay however patient will have one or two vega because of the tikshnata of gomutra but that one or two vega won't contain that much of the fluid okay which is intended for the shodhana purpose so i don't consider this as a shodhana chikitsa it is a shamana chikitsa and uh, it is very well absorbed by the patient and i have seen very good results of such type of the therapy so it is nothing but rukshana type of the therapy okay so um, there is there are seen complications also if we are doing continuous rukshana so same complications can be seen in such type of the patients also so for that you have to give this alternate day if you are doing it daily it can um, actually cause some injuries to your gut also so uh, this is the yukti that we can apply for using the basti therapy now the point here comes is what is rukshana and what is langhana because uh, acharya have clearly stated that chatush prakara sanshuddhi pipasa marta tapo pachanani upavapsascha vayamascheti langhanam now in this chatush prakara sanshuddhi basti is there niro basti is there okay so uh, whether niro basti is langhan or rukshan that is a very genuine question to be asked so we must understand what is the difference between this langhan and rukshan hai na so langhan is basically lagu guna dominant right rukshan is basically ruksha guna dominant wherever there is a ruksha guna there is a abhav of snigdhata there is a abhav of jala mahabhuta and wherever there is langhana need not to be the jala mahabhuta uh, uh, should not be less there jal is also lagu okay and uh, it actually counteracts only the guruta so if patient is having parthiv dravya means parthivta in his body or gaurav in his body jal itself is a lagu thing for him so while doing the basti therapy how can we clinically modify it so um for this uh, i will give a simple example of the previous patient of nephrotic syndrome where our intention was not laguta our intention was to achieve the rukshan actually because there was vata increase no doubt but that vata was due to somewhere it was there was avrana okay kapha was increased in the body and because of which the shoth was there so both the uh, doshas were there so if we remove the kapha with the rukshana then only the vata can get removed okay so in such cases uh, we intended to do the rukshana so we avoided what we avoided the sneha in that we used some type of the shodhana drug like pipli pipli was used in the kalka so pipli though it was having good action over uh, kidney still one important factor pipli is one of the content of putayavanya the kalka right so pipli is basically used there to achieve the utleshana and shodhana okay so to achieve the shodhana type of the action uh, if you do shodhana means after giving the basti patient should have multiple vega that is why how you can get jala mahabhuta from the body get removed so with that rukshana is achieved so rukshana is always jala mahabhuta should be dormant jala mahabhuta should be low then only rukshana can be achieved okay so for that purpose uh, multiple vega of basti is necessary and sneha should not be in included or sneha should be such that it won't get absorbed like erend sneha the erend sneha has a very uh, unique feature that uh, that is why it is used in amvata cases when used in low doses it get absorbed when used in high doses it get removed so i won't advise that you should use uh, erend sneha in small quantity if you want to achieve the rukshana with using erend taila 
you should go for large quantity of air and sneha instead of using it in a small quantity that is the clinical thing because see uh, you try this thing uh, sometime you give 5 to 10 drops uh, it is indicated na in amvata to give uh, along with uh, rasna saptakvat or maharasna di kashay or nirgundi kvatha uh, erend taila should be given it is to be given in dose of uh, 5 to 10 ml or uh, some people give it in a do do dose of 5 to 10 drops so that actually get absorbed that absorbed and then works as a shamana chikitsa. But if you want it to get removed or it should work as an evacuating type of the enema, then it should be uh, high dose. Means minimum 30 ml of the air and snare is required. Otherwise, it uh, may not get uh, uh, evacuated properly. So, langana. Then how you will achieve the langana with basti? Every basti is langana. That's what I achieve. I see. Because you do. Whenever you are doing basti therapy, you will feel lightness in the body. So every normal basti is langan. It will be rukshan only if you are taking some efforts to make it ruksha and to cause it multiple vega. If you are achieving only one or two vega, the basti is generally langan. So dashmula basti, what we generally use, it is a langan type of the therapy. And if you are doing it repeatedly, it will cause laguta in the body. If you are doing one anuvasan, three niruha, like the pattern, if you are following, it will definitely cause laguta in the body. But to achieve the rukshata, you should give more strength or tikshnata to the basti. Now, uh, I have seen some uh, practitioners using kashaya in the basti, only kashaya in the basti, nothing else. Only kashaya and sandho they add. Okay. In my UG days, I have seen our uh, sir, he was doing a uh, osteoarthritis patient, very nicely he was treating and he was giving only the Shmula Kwat. Dose was high, dose was almost uh, 700-800 ml like that and um, uh, in that much dose, he is adding one karsha of uh, Sendhav Lavan and directly he was administering the Basti. No Taila, no Kalka, nothing and still it was having wonderful results. So, how this is possible if it is not the classical basti? So, can we have any such reference in our classic? So, yes, there is one reference like Churna Basti. Churna Basti, Acharya have uh, indicated in case of Shul. There are two references of Churna Basti. One tells that only Drava you should use and just uh, put some powders of Rasna and all and give the Basti. That is Shulagna Basti. And one more reference is there where you have to add the oil also. But uh, there is no such honey and all that uh, classical preparation is not there. So, still it is a Churna type of the Basti. Um, so, Acharya has clearly told that the main requirement for the basti is avirodha dhatunam rasayonitvacha jalam ushnam that has to be there means the basti should have min, uh, enough quantity of liquid in it okay that is one of the important requisite to give any type of the basti uh, whether i am giving basti for rukshana purpose also na then also the volume of the basti should be enough because if you are not using jala, it won't reach to the rasadhatu. Because the threshold of rectum is very low. And uh, if you are giving basti in the low doses, it won't go to the colon. And if it is not going to the colon, it is not acting on your katubhava. So definitely the prerequisite is water should be there in the basti. So can we give only a warm water enema? It is the topic of research and um, it can be given. Hmm? So... Uh, what is the minimum or optimum quantity of the Niruvabhasti? Is it always Dvadash Prasruta? That is one of the important questions asked by uh, students and it comes to our minds also. So there are many references in Charak Samhita where Prasruti Yogic Bastis are mentioned, where the dose is not uh, Dvadash Prasrut. It starts from minimum 4 Prasruta. That is Chatu Prasruti Ki Basti, um, Ashta Prasruti Ki Basti, the Shat Prasruti ki Basti, Sapta Prasruti ki Basti like that. Even Madhu Tailik Basti. Madhu Tailik Basti is also a Padahin Basti. Okay, there are uh, nine Prasruta is the ideal dose of uh, Madhu Tailik Basti. Even regarding Shara Basti and Vaitran Basti also in Chakradatta it is told that it should be given after food and the dose should be Ardhamatrika. Because it is the given after food in uh, heavy dose it can cause Admana. 
so for that reason acharya have reduced the dose so after reducing the dose he he is intending for the basti to remain there for the some time and um, for that reason dose is reduced so this is the sutra that we are getting from acharya's clinical application that if you want basti to remain there for some time dose can be reduced it can be given after food but considering the complications considering the complication if some complications are possible in such uh, 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 administration of the basti now what should be the minimum dose then because see the rectum has a threshold of 300 ml if uh, uh, you are getting fluid up to 300 ml rectum can retain it rectum can retain it certain uh, to certain time and uh, then only you will get the urge of defecation if it is 500 ml then you will definitely get the uh, urge of defecation so the chaturprasruti ki basti which is the lowest dose it is uh, it comes to around 320 ml so it is little bit high than the threshold of the rectum so basti is intended not to remain in the especially i am talking about nirho basti it is intended not to stay in the uh, rectum it has to go to the colon and there it is having the main action and then it can uh, uh, see uh, the chatu prasruti ki basti what is explained in charaka is basically a shukra balaprat basti okay so in that particular basti if it remains in the rectum the absorption of those content which are having vajikarana action is uh, good so for that reason he reduced the dose so acharya charaka is also using the various doses of basti then why can't we so the main question was uh, the optimum dose of the basti is it really only 12 prasur so in my pg days i have done this experiment on uh, some patients i given one b- patient basti uh, for of total 12 prasruta so he has very good retention time he retained basti for almost 40 minutes so i wondered whether uh, his colon is having so much capacity and what is the issue so what we did is we increased the dose of basti daily whenever he is coming for that he was under kal basti therapy so we increased the dose in every basti by 100 ml so what we did we went up to 1500 ml the normal dwadash prasruti ki basti is around 960 ml that is around 1 liter we can say so we went up to 1500 ml and no complication was there in such patient uh, that only one patient i have experience uh, it may not be the it may be a incidental finding but it gives a clue that uh, if patient's capacity is there the basti is basically meant for colon cleansing basti is meant to re, uh, retain there for one muhurta then why can't we increase the dose so the clinically we can think about increasing the dose if it is uh, uh, not creating any complication like in sneha pana if it is uh, not creating any complication we go on increasing the dose so similarly in um, basti therapy also if it is not creating any complication we can try if it is required otherwise if we are getting the clinical results very good then no need to go for beyond 12 prasrut 12 prasrut is ideal dose okay that is by research acharya have given us so uh, one more important point raised by um, uh, students or even some practitioners because generally i have seen many practitioners are using basti in very low doses and what their logic is uh we are using basti in low doses because the bala of human is depleted as it is a kali yuga so the explanation could be if bala of human is depleted bala of medicine is also depleted so to achieve the clinical efficacy we have to use the medicine in proper doses so it is not needed actually to go for the low doses of basti if it is uh, uh, there is no clinical indication for it okay Uh, if it is vaitran basti it is okay but if it is a normal dashmula basti why to go for a low doses it will not have effect you are consuming the time of the patient and uh, your resources are also wasted so to achieve the optimum effect basti should be uh, dwadash prasrut and if there is some clinical problem or clinical complication is there then you can go for uh, low dose basti okay so uh one important mode of action question is why to give anuvasana after food so uh along with that i can raise some queries like uh 
uh, after eating the food we are advising in adra pani avastha we are advising person to uh, get the basti done means anuvasan basti done so that is the kal of kapha not vata then why we are giving the therapy anuvasan basti should be ideally given in vata kala that may be the common logic then if there is samta then what to do samta increases after this uh, administering of the food samta increases then why we are going for anuvasana so it may be wrong so the logic behind it is the anuvasana is basically meant for utleshan of dosha and um, increase of snigdha guna in the body okay it is basically a shamana effect it is having shamana effect on the body and it does the utleshana like we give sneha for sneha pana the anuvasana in many instances achara charaka have uh, 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 means uh, correlated uh, sneha sneha basti with sneha pana Hmm? so it is having similar type of the action so if it is having similar type of the action then uh, it should remain in the body acharya have given the time that 12 hours is the duration for which uh, basti should remain in the body so if you see this small experiment uh, what is there this is capillary uh, capillary tube or simply uh, a pipette is there so when we are pressing the pipette from upside rubber ball the air get removed and fluid comes inside and uh, if we are removing that bulb uh, and putting our finger over it the fluid never goes down okay this is because of the air pressure okay so similar thing uh, happens in body also see you are food that is going in your food pipe when it is in the stomach because of it there is a peristaltic movement that sets in and uh, the peristaltic movement before starting it the pyloric end it actually uh, constricts the st the sphincter get closed because of which a block is created and here we are not putting our gut in some oil or some solution we are actually inserting the oil from the downside yes so the oil remains there because of this air pressure so as soon as this uh, uh, pressure is released the oil get removed so that is the duration of 12 hour acharya uh, tells us that basti should remain for 12 hours so because of which it is uh, told that it should be given in the adrapani avastha now question comes kapha kala and samta now see um, though it is a kapha kala here nowhere in basti chapter acharya has mentioned that in vamana he has written clearly shleshma uh, sorry in virachana he has written clearly that shleshma kale gate jnatva yes and in vamana uh, it should be given in the shleshma kala so in uh, uh, there he specifically mentioned those things but in basti therapy actually what is that what is uh, the condition is we should remove those katu bhava from intestine and katu bhava remain there for long duration it is not like that it is present in the uh, kapha kala and it is going to get sham, uh, having a shamana in pitta kala it is not like that any time you go ko na aur desai sarkar uh any time you go for the basti therapy um this uh, 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 action can be achieved so that is not the issue but see if you are going to give basti in vata kala suppose then the peristaltic movement that you are seeing here in uh, your intestine it will be very fast because of vata and the bolus that is coming in the colon it creates the uh, peristaltic movement very fast and because of those rhythmic contractions your basti can't be retained so acharya clearly mentioned in uh, uh, such a avastha where there is a mala uh, vega is there you should not administer the anuvasan basti okay so uh, anuvasan basti cannot be administered in such a avastha so it is better to go in kapha kala only because there is a manda time and the sneha can retain for longer duration and samta there is no issue because samta is there in the amashaya when you are eating pakvasha is generally clear from it the pakvasha samta is uh, denoted by admana and all those symptoms so it is not there immediately after food so there is a, a big window for uh, your food and um, your basti to get um, close so that is the issue 
why we can go for anuvasana basti immediately after food now uh, guna of taila are vyavai vikashi ushna tikshna and sukshma and all the sneha are, are having anupravana bhav okay so because of these properties the sneha dravya tend to move in the upper part of the gut leaving the colon it tend to move into the small intestine so that is the action we are not actually willing to happen immediately it happens over the time in the 12 hours but if it happens immediately there will be agni mandya so to prevent this agni mandya if we are giving immediately after the food the blockhead will be there and air pressure will prevent the basti to go immediately on the in the small intestine anupravana bhav will definitely take the sneha to the small intestine but it it should take some time it should not happen immediately if it is happening immediately it will cause the problems so these are the logics behind giving basti immediately after food now see some uh, practitioners what they do uh, even i do sometime i told my patients that uh, try to retain your basti for some time because see patients are generally anxious whenever they take anuvasan basti they immediately go to the bathroom or they uh, defecate the basti and within a half hour if basti is going out it is not uh, giving any clinical results okay so even i told my patients that uh, you take the basti Uh, after taking the basti all those paschat karma should be done and uh, you just come and you lie down on your bed do nothing don't move here and there and don't do anything uh, that gives your gut some motility so don't take stress be relaxed uh, take deep breathing so with that we try to maintain the patient but uh, sometimes patient thinks that doctor is telling us to hold the basti forcefully right so if he he is holding the basti forcefully what happens is the common symptom that we are getting clinically is asthma lot of gases are formed in the intestine and the uh, element for which you are giving basti that is vata is actually aggravated with the basti therapy vata is aggravated so it is not at all advisable because it increases samta also you can clearly see the jiva samatva if you are doing basti in such a avastha so uh, that uh, uh, thing should not be done and uh, don't ask patient to forcefully hold the basti acharya has advised that basti should be repeated if it is removed and why acharya is doing such thing he is not telling patient to forcefully hold the basti these are some of the logics see if there is a increased intraluminal content hmm, uh, intraluminal content causes aerophagia means bacterial load is there in the small intestine and uh, it potentially produces gases so if you are holding for the long duration action from bacteria will be high and if such type of the bacteria producing gases are there in your intestine then the there may be admana okay so for that reason let that oil to get out and add new oil so that gut microbiota get some time to get adjusted with it and they can't uh, completely digest it okay so gases won't be there now visceral hypersensitivity Uh, because of the gut brain axis uh, patient get anxious and all uh, there will be a uh, hyper motility of the gut and because of which the gases are generally produced these are not because of the bacteria it is just because of the like irritable bowel syndrome the visceral hypersensitivity is there and uh, patient gets some symptom it is common with some some patients in normal basti also if it is not holding also now abdominal phrenic dyssynergia this is because uh, if you are holding the basti forcefully there will be a abnormal muscle activity characterized by um, anterior abdominal wall relaxation and diaphragm contraction this is the general thing that should be done to retain the basti now this activity actually redistribute the abdominal gases and thereby causing the anterior wall protrusion and visible distension so this redistribution of the gases is a difficult thing that is uh, why you should not ask the patient to forcefully hold forceful holding creates the contraction of the diaphragm and relaxation of the abdominal wall so that is the main issue while uh, uh, doing the basti therapy now outflow obstruction impaired gases they have to be removed generally we see while patient get uh, uh, anuvasana done he uh, gases are normally removed before anuvasana is evacuated that is ideally a good thing but out of some um, uh, psychological pressure if he holds that 
or uh, if basti is somewhere avaran is there because of vata and basti is not removed uh, this vata also get accumulated and because of which the atman is seen even an anxiety depression patient they get the atmana problem so in such patient it is not advisable to hold it forcefully okay now uh, this is one important question i would like to uh, put forward the scientific community that is it the, that always anuvasana is superior to matra basti because when we learn basti we told that sneha basti is 240 ml anuvasan basti is 120 ml and matra basti is 60 ml so sneha basti is superior anuvasan basti is medium and matra basti is lowest part okay so administer the anuva matra basti in such patients we are debilitated which cannot tolerate the basti who cannot uh, uh, who are not eligible to give the niro basti in such patient you can give okay so i will put forward one case that is a case of uh, uh, compression fracture see in compression fracture basically the vitamin d deficiency is generally associated and uh, there may be a fall uh, and patient gets such type of the symptom and acharya sushruta have given clear advice to give the anuvasan basti or sneha basti in such cases now continuous anuvasana we cannot give right but continuous matra basti we can give now the logic behind giving basti in such cases by sushruta is to achieve the lubrication to achieve the sneha over there because see in compression fracture that part is very near to your um, apana kshetra hmm? that is the lower part of your abdomen so if you are putting an oil in your gut it will definitely go with the anupravana bhav directly to that part so it will lubricate that part it will release the pressure it will uh, help in uh, ab through the absorption of those uh, sneha content it will definitely help heal the asthidhara kala through asthidhara kala it will help heal the uh, bone so for that reason if you are using some asthi shrunkala dhrit or you are using some uh, like vasa is indicated in fracture cases so uh, if you are using such type of the sneha uh, it is better to go for matra basti than to go for anuvasan basti uh, if you are giving anuvasana that means you have to give one day niruha one day anuvasana so break will be there and that niruha is not going to do a much thing because in such cases generally the anuvasana is indicated along with some deepana pachana orally you can do so um, in such cases it is better to go for Uh, matra basti rather than going for um, uh, this uh, uh, anuvasan niruha combo okay and i have seen in many patients most of the time the intervertebral disc prolapse patient comes to us if they are chronic or um, if they have uh, crossed their initial sam avastha and they are coming to nirama type of the situation to you then uh, it is advisable to go for matra basti because it can easily cure the pain like symptom because of the lubrication see only the intervertebral uh, disc prolapse causes the uh, pinching of that uh, sp um, uh, sciatic nerve so that sciatic nerve it gets free then patient will get relief from those uh, uh, tingling numbness and all so the lubrication is the only thing that is required so i generally prefer doing matra basti in such case uh, such cases initially and then you can go for yog basti or panchatik takshir basti or anything like that so uh, this is the clinical application where no basti is not less than any other type of the regimen everyone has their own importance right so um ha huh. this we already discussed so uh, regarding rasayana effect of the basti this is one example i missed initially so it was uh, in my phd thesis what we did we gave uh, rasayan basti rasayan basti is nothing but we use the kashaya of uh, guruchi gokshur and amulki in rasayana and in uh, sorry in kashaya and in kalka also and we did the basti and you can clearly see uh, these markers which are actually the markers of Uh, antioxidant activity so we can clearly see the catalase activity increasing rasayana basti group more than your modern control uh, sorry sorry sir ha huh. uh, even you can see this uh, lipid peroxidase activity getting reduced superoxide dismutase activity getting increased so all these are the effect of 
uh, your basti having antioxidant effect, the rasayana effect of the basti. So, um, basti can be used effectively if it is done um, once in a year to achieve the rasayana purpose in varsha rutu, preferably in pravrata rutu. If we do, uh, that is a very important therapy to give the prevention from aging, right? So, um, there is a very important concept of utleshana. Utleshana regarding, we know Utleshana in context of Vamana and even Virechana also. So, Utlesha definition, all of you might be knowing, it is Utlesha Bahir Gamanon Mukha. The opposite is Kopa, that is Kopas to Unmarg Gamita. In difference between uh, un, Utlesha and Kopa is, in Utlesha, Dosha tend to get removed. In Kopa, Dosha get uh, tend to go deeper in the tissues, like from Shakha to Marma they are moving. So, it is uh, just opposite to that. So, um, is it such context of uh, Utlesha in Basti also? Because, see, in Basti, we never do continuously uh, Nirho Basti. We go for Nirho Anuvasan, Nirho Anuvasan like that. So, that Anuvasan is basically um, Anuvasan is basically intended for Utlesha only. So, what is Utlesha? The concept should be clear. See, because most of the people think that Utlesha is increasing the dosha. So, is it like that? Because, see, I have given one example here. I am uh, one uh, eye species that, suppose that ice is on my hand and uh, I want to remove, suppose my hand is Shakha and I want to remove that dosha, that is ice, from my hand. Should I increase it in the dose? No, no need, no need. We just uh, need to apply the heat. It will get dispersed. It is there. It is present in same quantity, but it is dispersed from my shakha. That is my hand. It 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 went somewhere else. It might uh, went to the koshta. So uh, this is actually the the if we are giving dadhi in case of uh, vamana, kapha is increasing. I uh, com completely understood that. See, kapha is increasing. But what is actually happening? Kapha is not increasing in shakha. Kapha is increasing and making overall reduction in the dosha in shakha. It is making that dosha movement from shakha to koshta. That is the thing should be achieved with utleshana. If we are doing uh, uh, differently, it is actually kopa. It is not utleshana. So that basic difference should be understood and uh, if that is achieved, that can be achieved either by Vruddhi, either by Abhishanda, either by Paka or by Sroto Vishuddhi. So four methods are there, not only Vruddhi. If we consider that increasing, giving Kapha Vardhaka Dravya um, causes uh, Utlesha, it is not like that. Because see, if you are giving cold water, it also increases Kapha, but it never causes Utlesha because it makes the dosha to go deeper. It never makes the dosha to come out. So that is the thing we should understand in context of basti also. And we should apply that uh, logic in basti. So uh, the treatment plan should be like that. The dosha should get removed and not increased. So one more important question is, uh, can we give basti night? Because uh, generally it, it is the question for uh, practitioners and not for uh, uh, our academicians because our college timing is in the day only and we never give basti in night. Okay. And even uh, is it uh, wrong to give basti in day? That is also one question should be there. Because see in Charaka Samhita, they have clearly mentioned that Naraha Tato Nishi Anuvasana Arho. Means after giving the Niro Basti, you should give Anuvasana in the night. And even in uh, Shite Vasante Cha Diva Anuvasya and Ratra Sharad Grishma Ghanagama issue. So three seasons, Sharad, Grishma and Ghanagama. In such time, you should give Basti in the night. So are we doing something wrong? So they have clearly mentioned that Taneva Doshan Parirakshita Ye Snehasya Pane Parikritita Prap. Means you should uh, make the patient safe from Dosha which are achieved by uh, sneha Vyapada, like Tandra Sotlesha Mana Ho. If you are uh, doing proper management of this uh, dosha, uh, then you can give the basti in night also. So, uh, so Acharya Charaka is giving a mild hint that if you are doing basti in the night, some complications may be there. 
so there is one reference uh, from sushruta samhita that uh, uh, ridai regarding ridai pundarike na sadrusham ridayam syad ado mukham jagratas tad vikasiti swapatasya nimilati ridaye tamasa tamo gunena uchrite na avrute so tamaguna is increased in the night there will be the avr there will be the avrana of ridai and ridai is the basic uh, place where van vayu is there and van vayu is responsible for spreading this basti all over the body so you have to be cautious while giving basti in the night um, this avrana uh, can um, hamper you so um, if patient is very much ruksha and srotas are clear if condition is not that much sama then you can definitely go and it is beneficial also if you are following this ritu then it is beneficial also uh, one minute okay so uh even we can complete the yog basti within 5 days like uh, if yog basti it is not necessary to follow the kram that is um one anuvasan niruho on next day anuvasan on third day it is not required you can complete the niro uh, yog basti in 5 days how giving one anuvasan niro in the morning anuvasan in the evening niro in the morning anuvasan in the evening so in that way you can modify the Uh, schedule of the basti even in niro basti consecutively can be given three niro basti if uh, the patient is suffering from some kapha disorder so in uh, same i have given lekhan basti one anuvasan three niro like that so these are the pattern that we can modify now this is the general what we see uh, regarding mode of action of the basti basti acts by multiple ways the important way is stroto shodhan that we discussed a lot the another is important that is virya basti virya get absorbed basti acts by its virya virya means the active principles of the basti they may get absorbed or they may do the receptor stimulation that is a uh, maybe the receptor stimulation or there may be the ent uh, sorry um, uh, enteric nervous system stimulation so both the way the basti can act okay so this is the um, uh, in general mode of action of the basti this is what we experimentally did uh, this was the absorption of Uh, basti therapy we clinically uh, sorry experimentally proved uh, gallic acid standard it shows a peak like this this around 2.5 to 2.7 so this peak we can see in standard similarly we gave the basti to the rat and similar type of the peaks we achieved in rats also means basti content are actually getting absorbed this is proved by this hplc study no you can see these peaks in multiple bastis even after 90 minutes even after 80 180 minute it was there so um, this is the diagram that shows the importance of prakshepa see in two rats in one we gave the prakshepa in one we never gave the prakshepa so in the group where we gave the prakshepa the absorption was more faster okay so we can clearly see that uh in one rat the absorption is faster and achieved uh early and but to the low low uh, intensity and in other uh, rat uh, the absorption was slow achieved late but the curve was high so this is the difference created by prakshepa prakshepa actually creates the mild inflammation to your intestine and it uh, uh, alters the absorption rate actually so are there any modified methods to give the basti so i have come across some of the methods like uh, one drip method i have seen in uh, amdavad college um, rakta basti was given by the drip method it was very interesting method uh, in that um, the duration to give the basti was around half 25 minutes to half hour and uh, they are intending to keep the basti more in the rectum Uh, so that it can get absorbed so absorption was the target hence the method is modified even you can modify some machines are there also but the basic idea uh, is to churn the basti while preparing the basti preparation so if niro basti is prepared uh, can't we use a mixer or blender that is the question so see if if you are using the mixer it actually cuts the particle and the particle become like talcum powder shaped so talcum powder particles are irregular in shape so they never generally get easily absorbed and if you are doing trituration in your kharala or any patra with the uh, trituration then it gets spindle shaped so spindle shaped particles are generally readily absorbed 
now also basti uh, preparation time that is also one question some people tell that oh classical method is very difficult you go for 30 minute 45 minute trituration and then one basti is prepared so i have prepared in uh, my thesis time and even today we are preparing basti in 10 minutes so how that is possible see there are certain factors that you should keep in mind time depends upon how much revolutions you are preparing uh, you are giving to the basti while preparing if you are using your wrist part this part okay for that trituration the revolution will be high if you are doing like this the rpm that revolutions per minute will be low so the energy the kinetic energy that is transferred to the basti is very low so it takes around 30 minutes but if you are using like this you will doing you are doing faster trituration and it uh, gives the good emulsion i uh, tell you that the stability of the emulsion is also good if you are doing in this way in faster way okay so it makes the basti around 10 minutes okay so slowly adding the sneha is also important if you are putting all the sneha at a time it causes um, basti to get separated very early so these are the points to be kept in mind now can we prepare the different basti kalpa or kashaya um, uh, we can use uh, to prepare the basti because charak samhita kalpa are generally not available so it is advisable because see there are so many indications of uh, very good indications of this kashaya like in manjishtadi kwata it can be used in upadansha slipad see in pakshaghata medo dosha netra roga manjishtadi prashasthate even vatrakta and kushta also so many uh, uh, indications are there and this manjishthadi alone can be helpful. So Pakshagata patient we are commonly getting, Medodosha patient we are commonly getting. Instead of doing different different basti for different different things, we can use a simply manjishthadi kashaya. Even Falatrikadi kwat, very good. It is indicated for Prameha, uh, Madhumeha and even for Panduroga and even for some Kalpa, uh, Falatrikadi are there for uh, Amlapitta also. So this combination can be modified, you can add Chira Kashaya, you can add some Prakshepa and likewise you can modify it. Now one important and last point I have to mention here is Mansarasa. Mansarasa is added in the Basti, so what is the purpose? Generally, we think that Mansarasa is added in the Basti to give protein to the body. So is it possible that protein get absorbed from the colon? Not at all. because so dietary protein or whenever protein is coming from the outsource, it has to be broken down in amino acids. So uh, it has to be broken down by hydrochloric acid is required. Hydrochloric acid is not there present in your colon in a large quantity. So colon is more over uh, near to the basic. Okay, so highly acidic uh, media is required. So hydrochloric acid is not that much present in your large intestine. So it is not possible to break down this protein and to get it absorbed. If it is getting absorbed in some way, that may cause some complications. So what is the purpose then of adding this mamsarasa? So simple logic is, it is the laghu tamasneha. See, in uh, sansarajan kram also, peya vilepi, Yusha and Mansarasa. Mansarasa is actually the fat they are, we are giving. In Peya, we are giving carbohydrate. In Yusha, we are giving protein. And lastly, we are giving fats. So it is actually to administer the fat and not for the protein. It is the uh, point to be uh, uh, important here because it is the Laguttama Sneha. It is actually the Vasa, but Vasa is uh, always uh, uh, heavy to digest. But in Mansarasa, it is easy to digest. It also uh, contains collagen uh, in it. So it is Asti Posha Kamsha basically and you are giving Basti on the Asti Dhara Kala that is your uh, large intestine. So uh, Asti Dhara Kala uh, it is possible that it can get directly active uh, activated and it can uh, go as a nutrition to your bone tissue. So in that way, um, Mamsarasa in Basti, the purpose behind using is not protein, it is for Snehana. Okay, to make the Basti more Snigdha, more easy to absorb Snigdha, Mamsarasa is added. Because in Basti, we generally use Sneha. But still, that Sneha may not get that readily absorbed of how the Mamsarasa is absorbed. So for that purpose, Mamsarasa is added as a Prakshepa in the Basti. So it is all about that a big topic of Basti. So I can cover these much points only. So if there are any questions, uh, you are welcome. Thank you, Dr. Sopnil, sir. Uh, this is very nice presentation. And this question answers 
सेशन जैसा तो दिस इज द वे ऑफ आयुर्वेदा चरक सहित हमें भी जब क्वेश्चन आंसर किया है अग्निवेश और आचार्य पुनर्वसुन उन्होंने भी आयुर्वेद इसी पद्धति से समझाया है तो वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन और कुछ क्वेश्चन है डॉक्टर रूपाली इज आस्किंग अबाउट वॉट प्रिकॉशन शुड बी टेक वाइल गिविंग अनुवास बस्ती विथ मदन फल सिद्ध तेल हाँ यस मदनफल सिद्ध तेल इज बेसिकली ए तीक्षण टाइप ऑफ द ऑइल सो द ओनली थिंग दैट मैटर्स इज इट इज अ बिट एसिडिक व्हाट आई फेल्ट वाइल गिविंग बस्ती इन माय पेशेंट्स बिकॉज इट कंटेन्स मदनफल ऑल्सो एंड कांजी इज द बेसिकली ड्रग दैट वाज यूज्ड फॉर मेकिंग दैट ऑइल मदनफल एंड धान्यामल दिस टू आर द मेन कंटेंट so if you are having some um ushna tikshnata there or basically rukshata then you should be cautious you should not oil madan uh, you should not use that madan fall oil otherwise it is okay otherwise it is very good in those cases of uh, obesity of or if a patient is having osteoarthritis and he is having um this uh, obesity problem in such cases see when we are giving lekhan basti is not always for weight loss it is actually intended for vat vyadhi vat vyadhi if present in obese patient that uh, madan fal tel is a ideal formulation that what i think uh, no much uh, uh, caution is required just is tikshnata is to be considered if there is dah if there is some issue with uh, rectal burning um, then you should be a little bit cautious yes uh, there are so many questions but we have a short of time so we'll move towards the vote of thanks so i request dr uttam sir to for the vote of thanks so feedback form link has been posted in the chat box also it will be posted on the group and uh, on the email also so please uh, fill the feedback form you will get the certificate from vishu ayurved parishad thank you thank you all so dr uttam kumar sir yes 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 hello hello yes sir you are audible sir तो आज का जो लेक्चर डॉक्टर साहब का रहा वो बहुत ही ज्यादा एकदम जो है काफी कुछ नई चीजें इसमें मिली हैं और जो प्रैक्टिस वो कर रहे हैं और वस्ती पर जो भी उन्होंने अपने प्रयोग बताए वो वास्तव में बहुत ही उपयोगी हैं और उन प्रयोगों को हमें अपने प्रैक्टिस में लेना चाहिए और जैसा कि चरक में कहा भी है आचार्य चरक ने कहा है कि जो वैद्य को अपने विवेक से और अपने अनुभव से कई प्रकार के योग को बनाने चाहिए और चर, आचार्य चरक ने कहा भी है कि जो भी औषधियां हम जो है औषधियों के रूप में जो मुख मार्ग से प्रयोग करते हैं पात के रूप में या चूर्ण के रूप में उन सभी औषधियों को जो है एक प्रॉपर योग बनाकर और उनका क्वात या कॉम्बिनेशन बनाकर वस्ती के रूप में उनका प्रयोग हमें करना चाहिए और उसका बहुत ही अच्छा एग्जांपल इन्होंने दिया जैसे चंद्र प्रभावटी को भी इन्होंने जो है उसमें प्रक्षेप में डालकर और उसका प्रयोग बताया गया है इस तरह से जो हम पंचकर्म के जितने भी विद्यार्थी हैं शिक्षक गण है अनुसंधान करता है उन सभी के लिए एक बहुत ही अच्छी गाइडलाइन आज प्रस्तुत की गई और मैं समझता हूँ ये बहुत ही उपयोगी रहेगा और आगे इस विषय पर हम और भी जो अपने अनुभव हैं और अनुसंधान है उनको जो है वो साझा करते रहेंगे आयोजकों का बहुत बहुत सभी का धन्यवाद डॉक्टर योगेश जी हमारे बीच जुड़े उनका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर चौहान संतोष चौहान का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और जो जिनका गेस्ट स्पीकर के रूप में हमारे बीच में उपस्थित रहे उनका भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सभी जो हमारे जो है विद्यार्थी और शिक्षक इससे जुड़े उन्होंने सुना उन सभी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं मैं और कार्यक्रम के समापन करते हुए मैं जो है कल्याण मंत्र बोलूंगा और सभी जो है उसको जो है रिपीट करेंगे
ठीक है चौहान जी डॉक्टर चौहान हाँ जी हाँ जी बिल्कुल गुरु जी शुरू कर दीजिए सर्वे भवंतु सुखी सर्वे संतु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यंतु मा कश्चि दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 सभी का धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वन एंड ऑल तो यूट्यूब दिस लेक्चर विल आल्सो रिकॉर्डिंग विल बी अवेलेबल सून ऑन यूट्यूब ऑल्सो आई हैव शेयर द लिंक प्लीज ऑल्सो लाइफ टाइम मेंबरशिप लिंक इज ऑल्सो पोस्टेड ऑन द मेल एंड ऑल्सो इन द चैट बॉक्स और थैंक यू थैंक यू